We're in the manuscript department of the University Library Leiden and there's two interesting objects on the table here. The first is obviously a medieval manuscript, in this case from the late 11th century, but this tiny little circle thingy is something that is not often seen in medieval manuscripts or outside. It is uh, the remains of a bookmark, a device that allowed readers in the Middle Ages to point out where they stopped reading and where they wanted to pick up the next day, but also it gives an indication of what information that a reader found interesting and important to talk about, to discuss with colleagues. So it's not just a bookmark as in uh, modern bookmarks where you go back to the place where you left off. It's also something that we, modern scholars, can try to use to deduce how medieval scholars used information. And I'll show you how it works, and then that particular claim is a little bit more clear. Um, here we have a manuscript from the 11th century. It's from Normandy. It has beautiful uh, decoration on this page. And as you can see, it has four um, text columns. And imagine that you work on this manuscript as a medieval scholar and you need to tell yourself, or perhaps a colleague, uh, in this particular column, that particular line is very important to the research that I'm doing, or the discussion that I'm having, or as I'm trying to understand Augustine or another church father. How can you go back to that particular location when you've closed the book? The answer to that question is this little round device. You essentially um, it's, it's fitted on a modern uh, card now for store, storing purposes, but it essentially um, sits on a strip, sometimes recycled parchment, and you pull it down, and then you turn it, indicating which column um, the information that's relevant to you is at. So you have column one, two, three, four, and you see four Roman numerals um, indicating um, which, which of the four columns it is. So when it's in there, imagine that you then know what page the information is found, but also what column, and because you pull the thing down while it's um, fitted in a sleeve, you can also use the top of the sleeve, which actually looks very much like this, this card, the top of the sleeve at the bottom of the line that's very relevant. So it allowed the scholar, even after closing the book and after opening it uh, again, to go straight back to that particular line that was very important. It fits in the age in which this device was made. I think it's about uh, 13th or 14th century, but it, most likely, I think, 13th, 13th century. Um, this was the age where scholars actually needed devices to quickly go to a certain passage. It's the age of the birth of the universities. It's no longer reading a book from cover to cover, but you're interested in one particular page or in one particular passage. So you needed devices both inside and outside the book to help you do that. Now this book is from the late, late 11th century, so the page as such has none of these devices, but you know these devices from our modern books. For example, running titles at the top, page numbers, uh, chapter numbers, all those things are helping the reader to find information speedily, very fast. Um, and that's where this device comes in as well, because the scribe could design the page in such a way that it actually um, provided the text and some devices that helped the reader along the text. But there's also then this device which the reader himself or herself could add to an already prepared manuscript to provide extra care, extra means to get to certain information quickly. So it's a very tiny device, it's only 40 millimeters in diameter, but it's actually something that's very telling about research and scholarly culture of the 13th century and it's very uh, interesting that we have one here now because only 35 are identified in the world and so number 36 is in the University Library Leiden right here right now.